No one actually saw him fall, but he was found 35 metres below. Stop, stop. They visited the site this morning, obviously deeply distressed. A man and a woman are dead after a brick wall collapsed at the Grocon site. My father worked on the Westgate Bridge, and the Westgate Bridge, as a lot of people know, because they've been living on Mars, collapsed in 1970. Uh, 36 people got killed. Little did I know that my dad had survived one of the biggest industrial tragedies in Australia. It was probably one of the um, sort of incidents in my life that sort of really, in regards to health and safety, really made me uh, uh, passionate about it. Uh, we've all got families that we need to go home to. We've all got kids we need to tuck in bed. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're not the prettiest bunch going around, but uh, we deserve the same rights and conditions that everyone else in society has. Grocon go back a long way. I certainly remember Bruno, and uh, I remember the relationship we had with Grocon back then, which he'd always sit down and common sense would always prevail. Uh, he ran safe jobs. Since Danny's been gifted the company, then uh, there's certainly been a, a dramatic um, redirection of the company. It's a lot more of a provocative stance now, uh, industrially, and with that, uh, obviously, safety will suffer, and it has, it's taken a massive hit. In the last 15 odd years, I've been to uh, well over a dozen fatalities on site. Um, you see the effect it has on families. Um, you know that you've got kids and you've got nephews in the industry and um, I think it's important, you, you do this for a reason, it's not for egos. You just want, you want to be able to tell your kids that you've done something to the industry to make it a safer work environment. Um, no one should have to be stood over at work, it's all about just being able to go to work, be respected and uh, not have to uh, go, to a, go to a wife or a mother and say that your son or husband's been killed. I've got a 22 year old son at the moment works in the on site and every time you hear there's been an injury or something's happened I mean you straight away think about him that's the nature of our industry unfortunately I've been on sites where there's been blokes that just been killed laying there um, you know we worry about some trivial things in our lives sometimes and then when you're actually standing there there's a there's a poor bloke who went to work that day and you sort of think to yourself, imagine all the plans he had after work he was going to do tonight. He's going to probably do this, pick up his missus. He was probably going to go somewhere in the weekend. Who knows what they were going to do? And he's laying there in the dirt now, dead, you know, with a tarp over him. Sometimes you, we almost fall for that trick where you've got to start apologising for what we do. And, but when you're standing there, there's a dead bloke there who's not going to go home to his family that night. And you sort of think, here we are being attacked and that, and all we're trying to do is stop from incidents like this from actually taking place. It actually makes you angry sometimes and just makes us even more determined. And what I know about the blokes who are in the CFMEU is that they are hard workers, that they look out for each other's backs, that they really care about their union and that they care about the broader union movement. I mean, they're a bit rough and ready around the edges for sure, but I know that if ever I needed anything, uh, it's one of those blokes that I'd like standing beside me. It's about making sure that we uphold uh, the conditions and the safety and the environment in our industry so that our young blokes feel safe. Daniel has tried since he's had the company to uh, introduce non-union agreements. He's done that uh, a couple of times now. The, surf, the first time failed miserably. He just couldn't move on. You know, you've lost, you've been beaten, the people have spoken. And I think he saw the, the writing on the wall the second time and knew he had to, um, had to deal with us. And uh, that's what his workers want, um, regardless of what Mr Grollo says. Grocon employees are happy with their terms and conditions. They are happy with their um, uh, terms of employment. Blokes on Grocon sites seem to feel intimidated at every turn. Not, not too many people are very happy at the moment with the way he runs his show. His ideas with fighting against the union seem to be the main agenda since he's been in charge of the company. 
it sort of seems to be more about production and not about safety at the moment. We do weekly safety walks. Concerns that were brought up on those walks were brought up week after week after week. Uh, we found it was very, very hard to get cooperation from Grocon. Daily we're getting calls off members on the jobs about uh, wanting the right to be properly represented on his projects. If he was sincere about uh, safety on his workplaces, he'd have properly trained oh &S representatives on site looking after the workforce. He went out and employed all these folks, uh, and I'll name them, it's common knowledge, Peter Hewitt, ex-nightclub uh, bouncer, never worked in the building industry his whole life. He's a HSR, a health and safety rep for the blokes. John Van Camp, the Australian construction manager, his son, Daniel Van Camp, he's a health and safety rep for the blokes, so they'd be absolutely confident in that, you can just imagine. We're in a corner where uh, our members are still being stood over, they're still being intimidated, there's still safety concerns on those jobs. And although we'd love to sort these things out over coffee and biscuits, uh, unfortunately um, uh, it doesn't always work. We have been down here now for seven days, it's been a peaceful demonstration and not once has Grocon tried to enter this site. We are back in the Supreme Court this morning and there's no doubt that this was a stunt all organised by Daniel Grello, organised by the state government to take on construction workers. What is this blue is all about is this is about defending the rights of construction workers. It is about construction workers allowed to go to job and go to job safely. It was a show of force that's rarely been seen since the days of the standoff between building unions and the Howard government. The streets of Melbourne's CBD were shut down this morning when a thousand protesting building workers clashed with riot police. Extraordinary scenes in downtown Melbourne. As commuters made their way to work, Lonsdale Street erupted as police and protesters went head to head. The day when things flared up was not only a surprise to us, the whole thing was overkill with the police force, the whole lot. In the end, I'm a family man and um, I've got two kids. doesn't make me to end up being a thug. There is absolutely no need uh, for not only that amount of police, but for police horses or, or batons or capsicum sprays, etc. It's, uh, it's, it's horrible to think that in this day and age that they can be used in that manner uh, in an industrial dispute, in a, in a peaceful protest. I have never heard of a thousand police being used for a peaceful protest. It's unheard of in this country and in most countries. Uh, there were 3,000 shifts uh, deployed from Victoria Police over the two-week protest. Uh, we understand that all protests have to finish at some stage, but um, we were certainly of a clear mind uh, through Victoria Police hierarchy that um, as long as we assisted them when they needed assistance that um, you know, assistance would be granted. Well after uh, there was obviously the, the stunt by Grocon where uh, management from Grocon with, with four or five people that I didn't recognise, they weren't, they weren't workers of Grocon. We want to go to work, we want our workers. Uh, they came up in front of TV cameras and wanted to enter the, the, the infamous Gate 1. Um, Gate one is a 30 metre drop, so I'm glad that the protesters didn't move too far. It would have been fairly tragic for them. The whole dispute was stage managed by Grocon and uh, things happened fairly quickly where uh, we were in a situation where we were, we were confronted by 30 odd police horses and, uh, and riot police SOGs, I'm not sure what their proper terminology is. but. Uh, it took us all by surprise, and in particular, I think it took Victoria Police by surprise. I haven't seen those scenes yet, but I, I was in the vicinity of the area, and I, I can tell you that that was absolute thuggery and intimidation, uh, disappointing for the Victorian police, I'm sure. I haven't reviewed all of the footage, but at this stage, we're comfortable that they uh, behaved reasonably appropriately. Not one charge has been laid to this day. Now, I think that speaks for itself, the discipline that our members had that day. Outside. Now, they haven't really made it clear exactly what their issue is and why they do it. Um, really, Grocon has an EBA. We have an EBA, which we signed off two months ago, with our workers, of which the union are party to. It got to the point where 
it was simple to see that uh, Grocon had reneged on the agreement to sit down and consult with us about proper representation and to stop the intimidation. So, uh, so you haven't I... broken any of the elements of that EBU which is only two months old? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And we have a harmonious workforce. Some people are a bit frightened to step up and sort of say something because they're scared that they'll lose their job. I mean, we're, we're getting footage, we're getting footage and, uh, and, and photos sent through daily of uh, safety concerns on, in particular, the Mire Emporium. Within a couple of days after the protest, we had uh, footage sent through of, uh, of Gate 1, of a truck delivery. Um, the truck backs up to a, a raw edge, 30 metres odd deep. Um, if you had a slipped on the pedal, it would have been a fairly uh, a fairly horrific video um, and there's just no coordination with the delivery of the crushed rock. Uh, we had members in the hole uh, that were unaware that the, the rock was about to be dumped into the hole. It makes my guts turn when I see the Grocon win safety awards. We see the day-to-day -day problems of the sites. Before a bike fell off the crane there was every chance it could happen. We spoke about it for three or four weeks beforehand saying someone's going to die here. I mean, it was obvious uh, that Daniel Grollo, when he hit, he hit the TV cameras running and he had, I think, a lot of the general public on his side because they were only hearing one side of the argument. It was obvious that he was very uh, much in control of his own stage management. Um, it, is known, it, is, it is known to us that his uh, senior member of staff uh, that handles his media, uh, is, is married to a senior officer of Victoria Police um, and that, that beggars belief really in the way that this whole, this whole theatre played out. But it was obvious to us and the people we were liaising with from Victoria Police that the, uh, the calls were coming from a lot higher. We think the public have uh, the right to know. Um, we see it advertised just recently that 400 police are used to smash outlaw bike clubs. Look, the public have a right to know. We are calling for a public inquiry into what happened in August 2012. We had a good relationship with Victoria Police. It was coordinated, it was peaceful, and the way things happened there, there's got to be questions asked. in what I'm doing. It's not about me. All the media attention, uh, I'm trying to manage it. I don't want it. I never ever wanted it because sometimes it exposes my family to it too. So it's not a pleasant experience when you expose to some of this media scrutiny. And you got to take the good of the bad. I want the next generation to inherit better conditions and a better union than what we inherited. And that's how it should be, not go backwards. You hear of Daniel and you see Daniel uh... Uh, you know, sitting in Central Park in New York and sipping on champagne and, and globe trotting around Europe. Uh, that wealth has come from the blood and sweat of, uh, of construction workers and uh, they deserve to have their family time as well. We're fighting so our members can have the same rights as, uh, as Daniel Grollo's got. Relationships can't continue like they are at the moment with uh, with uh, Grocon and its workers and Grocon and the union. Um, at some stage, uh, we're going to sit down. Uh, they, all have a, they all have a resolution in the end, but uh, make no bones about it, we have no options here. And we have to follow this through. All we want Grocon to do is what the rest of the industry is doing, and that's uh, recognise proper representation on the jobs and making sure that uh, the workers on those jobs are working safely and without being intimidated. To all my members out there, to all my nearly 30,000 members out there, I just got to know one thing, we will never, ever, ever give up. If your son or daughter was working on a Grocon site, would you be worried? What would you rather? Your son or daughter working on a properly represented union site with qualified safety reps or on a Grocon site?